Hello ladies and gentlemen, EJK here, and I am currently hiding from the sun right now. It's the middle of the day and it's freaking hot here. I gotta turn on the AC soon. But, before I start sweating my, uh, my skin off, let's take a look at one of the new DreamHack, re newly released DreamHack replays, love stumbling over my words, of Ty vs. Bunny. I re specifically remember this game being a pretty pretty exciting game from both sides. Bunny put up a pretty good fight, but we're going to focus more on our Korean Terran hero, KT Tai. KT Roaster Tai. <laughs> being an observer is, must be so hard. I really think if you want to have like a more professional tournament you should have dedicated observers because observing the like you should be able to know what's going on just by seeing the production tab and having an observer like highlighting all of the important things for you <coughs> oh boy this game I think this yeah so CC first against two Reaper expand it seems like a pretty hard counter and he's gonna scout it first too uh, thankfully, uh, Ty ended up going for two Raxes. Very safe. I forgot to put my thing on busy. Whoops. There we go. Alright, so the only reason why Ty doesn't flat out die to this is because Bunny's micro is not the best. And he also made the two barracks. So a different CC first variation is to go barracks and then gas and then get your factory out. But if he did that, I'm sure he would have died very, very fast. So altogether, Ty is pretty far ahead. Bunny, though, <coughs> he is doing the smart thing. He knows that Ty's not going to be aggressive for a while. He There's no tech lab. The factory is uh, finally coming down. They're pretty even in tech timings. So what Bunny does is he's taking a third command center because he knows there's nothing that Ty can do against it to punish him. And he's also doing a lot of harassment with these Reapers. It's a pretty heavy investment. Uh, he only loses... God, I don't even want to know how many Reapers he lost. Um, I think he lost like four or five Reapers. <coughs> <coughs> Which is not a very good investment for for Bunny. Uh, and then he ends up losing all of those reapers as well. So Ty is definitely ahead in this situation. And if we look at his build here, let's just keep his point of view for a second here. He's going for a very fast two rack stim build. It looks kind of like a TVP build and he's taking a very fast third command center behind this. And the reasoning behind this is taking that fast third command center he's also playing a very macro oriented game so it would be kind of too greedy to take that third command center before he got any kind of tech out which is what he's doing getting the stim starting siege tank or almost starting siege tank production getting the medivacs out and then also get it like so since he has this stuff he's kind of safe now to take the third base and not only take the third base but add the double up double engineering base as well so he's going to be going into a very very three base oriented macro game and what I like about Ty here is that at the same time he's doing this drop he's also sending an SCV to the I believe to the watchtower if not to the watchtower he's just sending it out on the map and I really like that about him so he kind of like knows as a result that Bunny's army is not over here so like if the SCV went out and he saw Bunny's army over in this position he would have known to bring the medevacs back but he didn't see anything so he's gonna drop with these medevacs but Bunny has a bunch of marines there so he quickly pulls back <clears throat> he scans though cuz he just wants to see what Bunny's doing if he's gonna be doing a he already knows that Bunny's gonna be going bio because of the amount of marines but what this scan accomplishes is uh, when he's going to be able to lift the third s command center up and uh, how defensive he has to play with his army. As we can see here, Bunny has a third command center, he has siege tank production, so his medevacs are very late. Uh, Ty has two medevacs already. Bunny is 
going to have two medevacs starting in about 35 seconds. So that means that Ty doesn't have to worry about any aggression over here. And he doesn't have to make any turrets. He doesn't need to make a sensor tower very quickly. He can take his... He can take and establish his third base. He can basically macro up pretty freely right now. <clears throat> he has complete map control, and I would definitely say he's he's kind of like ahead from his opening earlier on. He has a larger army, and the SCV count is in Bunny's favor because of that third command center. I really like what Ty's doing here. So he splits off like this is completely low cost investment it doesn't need to do any damage so he used the double medevacs over here and he poked in here if he didn't see any units he would drop them and do damage and then leave but since he did see units over here he kind of circumvented this whole area and just went over here to kind of check if he could do any damage and like he's able to find a sweet spot here uh, because Bunny's prepared. He's prepared over here. He's prepared over here, but he's not prepared over here. So Ty is essentially spreading Bunny thin and using the mobility of the two medevacs to boost around uh, these slow marines with no stim and these immobile siege tanks or immobile siege tanks. <coughs> so any damage you can do here is a really good trade and he even gets out he only loses three marines but now the worker count is in his favor <clears throat> and he's even going back if he can get a couple more SCVs <coughs> which he does and he cancels he gets the turret as well and this drop in the meantime is just kind of like seeing if it can do any damage over here just doing this double pronged attack it's a very low investment by Ty he doesn't need to do any damage with it. He's basically testing Bunny's strength to see if his army is well positioned. And Bunny's is not. And as a result, Ty's able to do a substantial amount of damage. And as we can see behind this, Ty, he is not he's not too focused about doing anything else right now. Uh, it might seem like a lot of work to multitask with these two dropships, but all we see that Ty is doing at home. He was making SCVs. He stopped making workers at about 50. He's going to resume production when his third command center lands. Uh, all he's doing is macroing. He's making units. Making units. <laughs> going to be making units. Uh, he is. He's not even. He's just going to put his armory down soon. He's going to add a couple of buildings, but he's not really doing anything with his units. So, all of his actions, his three, almost 300 actions per minute are going into microing this, microing this, and then just, you know, keeping his units producing, making sure he doesn't get supply blocked, all that good stuff. He's not really trying to do anything tricky such as set up a third pronged attack with this set of units by going like over here. Uh, that's kind of overdoing it. That's that would be over aggression. He could do that, it could do damage, but it opens him up for a counterattack and c kind of possibly to let his advantage slip away. Because right now, he has a pretty good advantage. He has a higher worker count, he has a higher army count, and he has his tech has progressed more than uh, Bunny's. Actually, it might not have because he's just starting combat shields. I think he forgot that. <clears throat> but anyways, so... If you're a Terran player and you're in this kind of a position where you have all three bases up, your third base is significantly faster than your opponent's third base as well. That's interesting. The orbital is landing as a regular command center. Uh, then you don't really have to be ultra aggressive because you're going to have more production than the other player in just a second. You're going to have a higher economy as well. Uh, as if we look here, Ty's economy is a lot higher than Bunny's, so he's going to start producing a ton of units. His supply is going to skyrocket in a little bit. <clears throat> and Ty, he's uh, sending Marines around this quarter. It's very important to have an idea of what's going on there. And we see here this push out with three siege tanks. It's kind of a pretty standard push. All it was meant to do was try to deny Bunny's base and apply some light pressure. It didn't really do that much damage. He sieged up in range of siege tank fire. 
And I also, I'm gonna go back for a little bit just to highlight what he's doing over there. <coughs> Having control of this corridor is extremely important. So his marine just killed an enemy marine. And his stim's fresh, so he literally just killed a marine there. <coughs> what this tells Ty is that there's going to be... Uh, controlling this corridor, you can either do that by having a sensor tower, so you have kind of like a heads up of when units are entering this atmosphere, or you can have a unit just over here. So like if it's patrolling over here, or if it's patrolling over here, that kind of helps you see when medevacs are coming. So like if bunny tries to boost a medevac anywhere over here then Ty is gonna see it immediately and he's gonna be able to react to it in time And as we can see here Ty he hasn't left any units at home he only has two turrets going down <clears throat> so he's gonna be relying completely on his defense to defend against any of the drops any potential incoming drops to clean it up because he has the two turrets that'll take care of the medevac and then his reinforcements and even maybe pulling SCPs will uh, help end the drop as well. The most, the majority of his army is over here. And Bunny, he's our. So if we take a look at this engagement uh, from both sides, we'll see Bunny is already in a good position. Ty kind of, he's going to be walking into siege tank range over here. Thankfully, Bunny's vision doesn't see it. Bunny really should have a marine over here. But Ty, he's going to walk straight into the siege tank line. He doesn't know that Bunny has taken his third base yet, either. This Marine, what this also does is give information about the third base over there as well, which is pretty important, the location of the third base. So Ty kind of just loses a bunch of units because he kind of does a gut reaction siege up immediately, and then, uh, or like after taking a pretty heavy volley f from the siege tanks. But he sieged up in range of the siege tanks, and it's kind of just a mistake by him and he ends up losing both of these siege tanks over here. If he sent a marine ahead of time, kind of like stimmed it forward, he would have ran into the siege tank fire and he would have known that there was at least one siege tank over here. And then he might have, that might have prompted him to throw down a scan and move over here. I generally like moving, I think Ty was trying to put up a siege position over here like right here to prevent units from like kind of coming down this ramp and taking the third base that Bunny took. And I think he thought he was farther ahead than he actually was. But if he knew that Bunny's third base was already here and he knew that the siege tanks were there from either a scan or a marine stimming forward, the best next position would have been to go over here and siege up with the siege tanks and start denying mineral patches, this gas, and also to potentially take down that turret as well. And it's a very annoying position if you can siege up over here and start shelling away at the mineral line because it really denies a bunch of mineral patches and it kind of makes that third base kind of like half a base even. Like Ty, his third base is still really good, really good healthy saturation and one of the strengths of a like a really strong macro player is that even though they take crappy engagements like what happened to Ty and he losing him losing those two siege tanks he still has a third base to fall back on and he, by the just kind of the sheer resources available to him and like how much he's mining and how much resources he has compared to his opponent he's still gonna be in a very good position now as we approach the mid game I really like what Ty does here he starts to use these kind of like just single medevac drops and do multi-pronged attacks. Uh, this marine force is kind of like just dealt or here to deal with this marine force. Notice how like at first there was just one marine here by Bunny. Ty's marine came in and stimmed and killed it. Then Bunny sent another marine up and killed Ty's marine that was really weak. And then Ty sent over a couple marines to kill this marine. And then now Bunny sent over a couple marines. I think these two marines were like the marines from the last wave that got sent out. And then they were stimmed backwards to stay alive. And now Bun Ty is bringing a much larger force of marines to deal with this small marine force. It kind of just, like this has happened multiple times within the past five minutes. Fighting for a vision of this corridor. And that kind of just highlights the importance of 
having vision of certain areas of the map. So if uh, one player spawned here and another player spawned here, it would be this area that's uh, being attacked. Uh, on different maps, there's going to be a different, just different areas where players will try to contest for map vision. And as we see here, that's what Ty was doing. Uh, this is kind of an aggressive push by Bunny. Now he's going to kind of counter shove because Ty lost two siege tanks. He's, he, lost, he had to give up a lot of ground. This one medevac though, I really like. So there's this marine here by Bunny to spot if there's going to be any drops here. I like that by Bunny. And he's also kind of like, he's he has a pretty large army in an offensive position. So this is where TVT starts to get really tricky. It's kind of like chess because you have like one chess piece over here. You have another chess piece over here. You have a third less significant chess piece over there. You have kind of like a kind of like a knight. It's not a late game piece, but it's a pretty it can do a lot of damage if left unchecked. And then you have like just the pawns over here. Uh, just I don't know what the economy would be called in chess. <laughs> you don't really ma remake your queen or anything after it dies. But yeah, so like all of the places I'm pinging are just kind of like different chess area or chess pieces I guess these are immobile pieces so they're not gonna move the bases but the units wise there is this there's this there's this there's this and there's this so there's like multiple chess pieces of units all over the map and it starts to become a very strategical slash tactical game of uh, kind of catching your pieces out of position oh and bunny I guess he had a piece over here and that was able to quickly deal with this drop that was a good good thing by bunny to have some units there it really it was kind of sloppy by Ty not to pick it up and run it away as soon as possible the one big advantage that Ty has though is that he's gonna be taking his fourth base really soon whereas bunny hasn't even started his yet so one of the ways that you can become a very good player is simply by kind of keeping an economic advantage that against your opponent. So when Ty takes this fourth base over here, that tells us that he's like he has he's kind of like in control of the map or in control of the game. He lost some of that losing the two siege tanks early on over here. But for the most part, he's still in a good position. He's not in a good enough position to end the game, but he's not in a bad enough position to need to make constantly or like throw down more barracks. Yeah, this is a very, very fast fourth command center. This was, okay, no, never mind. There's his factory. I was going to say it was before his second factory, but there's a second factory. So this is a pretty normal timing. It's basically the time in the game where it's even. You can't do anything to kill the other player immediately. So what you do is play defensively, uh, wait for him to start to move out of position, and kind of prepare for that opportunity. And to also, since he's playing defensively, also to just start a base, because small skirmishes and like battles become the outcomes of them become significantly less import important. Like it's all it's very obvious that it's important to win battles, but the out like how well you win it become significantly less important when you have an economic advantage so let's say like both players are at 200 200 supply but bunny has three bases and ty has four bases who's going to win the game well obviously ty because he has a bigger income he's going to be able to replenish his units more and bunny's going to have a depleted bank so even though bunny might win the fight if he doesn't win it in a very convincing fashion like if Ty somehow manages, like if they trade in a decent way and maybe Bunny got like ten su a 10 supply lead, he's not going to end up winning because Ty's going to have a full mineral base uh, available to him to produce more units and just outproduce Bunny. So that's like, this is kind of what's separating Ty right now from Bunny. Like Bunny is a top 16 EU Terran player on the GM ladder. And Ty is kind of just like Flash's little baby. So this is like one of the differences that are kind of separating 
European TVT from Korean TVT. The Korean TVT is a lot more advanced where Ty recognizes that he's going to be, he can't do any damage right now and the best next step is to take a fourth base and solidify an advantage. Whereas Bunny, he also could be taking a fourth base right now. I mean, the game is pretty identical. Uh, I wouldn't say either player is really ahead at this point, except the fact that Ty is making the fourth base, which is going to be putting him ahead, and Bunny is choosing not to. Bunny's factor is also significantly later as well. <coughs> uh, Ty's Ty's going to have at least one siege tank out before Bunny's siege tank starts making units as well. So Ty's siege tank play siege tank uh or factory timing and his fourth not Ty Bunny's. Uh, factory timing and his fourth base timing are just kind of off from Ty's and that's going to give Ty a pretty decent advantage going into the mid to late game because the siege tank count is what lets you keep these entrenched positions if you have a siege tank line you can't really attack into it you have to wait for the enemy to unsiege up and then to like move around to try to like start chipping away at the siege tanks so that's kind of what stabilizes this game a lot is by having siege tank lines so there's a lot happening in this game right now that's why I have to like pause it so I can explain all the little things that's going on Ty he's sending another medevac just a single medevac around if we take a look where it's going it's so the way he's waypointed it he can either waypoint it so it goes to this base this base this base and then to this destination to check for hidden bases but the way Ty's doing it is he's just going here and then here to circumvent the watchtower vision in case Bunny did have a marine on that side of the map. So there's the medevac going there. Once again, this quarter is is just constantly being contested. It's going to be very important for Ty soon because he's going to be taking a fourth base. So if Bunny somehow manages to get a good position over here, then he's going to easily deny this base. So that's why Ty has to be very, very careful about not let, making sure Bunny's army does not get over here. And Bunny, his army's kind of moving forward there now. He didn't see the fourth base yet, but his army's getting in a really good position. Uh, that's why Ty stims forward to kind of force Bunny to siege up in this position. And even though Ty's going to lose a decent amount of units, all he wanted to do was to get Bunny to siege up over here and kind of prevent him from touching this fourth base. And we see here, uh, this reinforcement line by Bunny is probably going to be able to clean this little drop up. Yeah, siege tanks are pretty good units. And uh, Bunny's kind of losing a bunch of units here. He didn't get his siege tanks over there as fast as I would like, but his siege tanks are there now. Uh, he has bought enough time to kind of prevent the siege tanks like they're barely in range of this base right now and before they even start to attack this base there's these two siege tanks that are kind of standing in the way between bunny completely denying this base so if we just go back to exactly what happened so i can just like now you know what to look for in the battle so ty stims with this force immediately to force a siege by bunny and that's what's going to buy him valuable time to bring this group of units over here to keep this base alive and from getting it denied and one thing I don't like about Ty like I like his multi-pronged attacks but if we look on here we saw that uh, he float he went right past this base but since his units was waypointed his medevac was waypointed to this area and he's not really like paying attention to it either he didn't even stim he literally just dropped the Marines and he's just like you can die now thanks for your service uh, if he was paying attention to these units, he would have picked them back up. He wouldn't have dropped over here, but he would ins have instead dropped over here to deny this base, further preventing Bunny's command center or fourth base from being taken. Like if he denied the base, he would have delayed it for at least another half a minute, which is really good since Ty has his base mining. Bunny's base has fun just started, so Ty is going to be in an excellent economic position for. A very long time basically until Bunny's fourth base starts mining. So this battle here, uh, once so he's 
forcing a siege up again just one tank this time bunny knows that time is not on his side he needs to try to get into the mineral line as fast as possible but uh, sieging up over there and then unsieging and then sieging up over here gave Ty enough time to bring units here from his reinforcement point over there so that's what's gonna keep his fourth base alive and now that like he kind of has this fourth base area uh, like now he's just in a really good position and it was basically all from like Ty hasn't really done any fantastic micro or macro well I guess more fantastic macro than micro or like he hasn't really had a fantastic gameplay it's just been very simple it was to take a very fast fourth base a faster base than bunnies and then to just kind of take a economic lead as a result of that because bunnies fourth base is so slow <clears throat> he's playing a very very standard standard TVT right now and now uh, the sensor tower is up bunnies sieging up over here or Ty sieging up over here to kind of he doesn't yeah so now like he sieged up over here it's gonna prevent bunny from ever coming up there so bunny's next logical move is to come over here and start to see if there's any weak spots on this side of the map for him to deal damage with and I like what Ty does here so he's gonna pick up so this positioning does two things for Ty by sieging up over here he allows himself to uh, prevent bunny from coming through this corridor and potentially sieging up the base like he was he was gonna that's what bunny was gonna do so Ty's kinda just one step ahead of bunny so he sieges up there and now bunny's army is kinda like gonna have to move back but I also like what Ty does here because this positioning serves a multi-purpose so it also serves as a kind of like a halfway point between here and here so by having his units sieged up here it's just one boost away from the main from threatening the main base and before Ty even goes in with his medevacs he checks there's a bunch of turrets he sees that with the scan and he immediately boosts back and drops his units kind of like just a maybe I might be able to deal damage but if there's defense there I'm not even gonna try uh, Ty doesn't have nearly as many turrets as Bunny does 3 versus 5 Hi, just interesting to note um, I guess that just says that Ty is not as worried about a doom drop because he has been controlling this corridor for the entire game so that if he if like so since he has this control he would be he would have kind of an alert as to when a med some medevacs were coming across and like if a doom drop came across then that would give Ty like if Ty spotted it here it gives him enough time to bring his units all the way over here like from here to here and then also like rally his units over here too and he would easily be able to clean up any doom drop bunny on the other hand he just built a ton of turrets just to be like don't even try to uh, don't even try to doom drop because instead of having units close by to reinforce if there is a doom drop coming and because bunny doesn't have position of this area or vision of that area uh, that's why he that's one of the reasons why he has turrets there and having a lot more turrets there also means that bunny can do stuff more aggressively so we see a part of his army over here and then we see another okay that's more of a marine force but we see another big chunk of his army over there for Ty, we see a big chunk over here but then we see a big chunk over here being defensive and then another big chunk over here that can either reinforce this area this area or this area if any of them so choose to be attacked so now that Ty sees a bunch of marines coming by uh, he's gonna try to loop around for a little trade bunny good positioning there by siege tanks uh, because he knew that Ty or a big part of bunny's army was over there but since since Ty like saw this army and he even scanned to see that's a bunch of marines now look we see all of these units from Ty they were right over there they get moved over here and so now he's completely safe against uh, what Bunny's gonna be trying to do now this attack by Bunny it's looking to be a decent setup right now this is kind of an interesting interesting position Bunny tries to break it and by try I mean he kind of does well but Ty okay so like the reason why he didn't completely crush that army normally if you have a surround like that and you have a larger army you would usually crush that army 
It's the law of physics, gravity crushing the army. But what Ty does here is he has this little group of units. So this little hit squad of units, they went from here to here to here. So this is like the USA. This is like Iraq. And this is like Vietnam. <laughs> so these units have been like all around the world. And they're going to help their buddies over here who are about to be dead. So if Ty didn't have this little group of units swinging by to kind of split to thin this army out, then this army would have been completely crushed and Bunny would have taken a huge economic leap. But as a result, uh, Bunny is able to, or no, not Bunny, Ty is able to kind of like keep this group of Marines alive that otherwise would have been trapped by Bunny's group of Marines over here, and to also have siege tanks to fall back on safely. So he can just siege them up. <coughs> okay, he doesn't siege them up, which is also good. He backs them up because he because Bunny did have a lot larger army and Ty didn't want to throw away this army but because Ty basically had some units over here when the fight occurred over here he was able to save like 8-ish marines plus a medevac or two from being trapped and as we can see here uh, Bunny's poor poor fourth base is gonna go down so let's just backtrack when that happened Ty all game he's been doing a lot of drops like just these single drops, he once again he's waypointing it in a similar direction, past the watchtower. I'll ping the spots so you can see it on the mini map. It's like just just outside of vision of the watchtower, which goes right there, <coughs> and so he's gonna land it there. So like this little drop is coming in when all of this action is happening. So like I was talking about this positioning serving dual purpose, and then him coming up over here, but Bunny having good positioning. <coughs> Ty seeking up in a kind of a bad spot. Now Bunny's gonna take a good trade, but he doesn't get a completely good trade off because uh, Ty has some more units coming to flank the flanking units that Bunny has, and he's able to save like this many Marines and these two medevacs as a result of that. Uh, and now Ty also has this little port, this little number over here, about to wreck this fourth base. So if we see Bunny, his complete focus is on this side of the map he sh on I think he should would have been better off taking this space but if he did so choose to take this space he should have had a marine over here and a marine over here to spot for possible drops incoming and then even maybe a marine over here because there is a little dead space over here between the watchtower and this little area so if he was going to be taking this base he should have had a lot of vision on this map so like if we look at Ty he took this base because he has a sensor tower over here so he has he essentially has vision of units coming in here he also has control of the watchtower so he sees if there's going to be stuff there because of the sensor tower he sees units coming in over here and he also has a sensor tower over here so bunny would have to drop all the way over here to even get to his third base which is a very very long way away so this for this little marine drop here it's able to completely deny bunny's fourth base and this goes from ty having a small advantage <coughs> uh he he it's a little it's a very small marginal advantage he has a few more marines he has one more medevac he has slightly more scvs it gives him a small advantage but it's by no means enough to win the game but this here this prevents bunny from mining a fourth base whereas ty has already been mining a fourth base for a pretty long time now, if we look at the position in the game, the timing, it's about 20 minutes. Bunny is almost mined out of his main base. He's going to be mined out very shortly. His natural base is going to start mining out very soon. He's already lost a couple mineral patches. He's about to lose a bunch more. And his third base is kind of looking healthy, but these mineral patches are kind of halfway depleted. So, really, Bunny's only on one healthy base right now, whereas Ty, this base is almost mined out just like Bunny. This base is almost mined out just like Bunny. This base, pretty healthy, it's a full base, but Bunny, or not Bunny, Ty has a <coughs> completely saturated base over here as well. And like, it's just eight extra mineral patches that Bunny just does not have access to, and he's not going to have access to for another hundred plus, blah, 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 like 20 seconds to land it, so like another two minutes at least. 
that Tai is going to have a sizable income advantage. And this is really when Tai wants to start doing some trades and kind of chipping away at Bunny's army because as we see here, Bunny can't replace his army. He doesn't have the income to replace it either. Tai's income, he has 300 minerals more, so he's uh, 300 times 5. So he's he has a 20% income bonus, or he has 20% more income than Bunny does currently. <coughs> and now this is kind of like just Tai kind of getting a forwarding position. Uh, he he was n over here, and now he's kind of just creeping forward because he wants to start backing Bunny into a corner. And Bunny here, he's gonna try to drop. He's going in range of the sensor turret or the sensor tower, and like Tai has plenty of time to react. So, like this is Bunny dropping like that is kind of like a YOLO, please let me win kind of thing. Like. I hope, I hope, I hope you aren't going to notice a little red dot on the mini-map flying past the sensor tower. So ignoring everything else and just kind of waiting for these units. And I really like how Tai has always had units over here throughout the entire game. And the, once again, these units can reinforce this area, this area, and this area, and this area. Bunny, he kind of has the same thing. His rally points kind of, kind of like mixed. He kind of just has all of his units over here, and he doesn't really have any way to defend this fourth base. Whereas, like if he, like his rally points the same place, but th these group of units can't get over here in time, but they can still get over here and over here in a decent amount of time. So Bunny's fourth base is just kind of in a really bad spot, out of position, really. And that's why he's able to ties able to snipe it for free. But anyways, so we see this drop coming in. Bunny's like, please, please, please. I hope this pre-ignite after or these ignite afterburners also have cloak built into them. Nope, it gets completely shut down. Uh, Ty is just 100% on top of his game here. Uh, by just kind of and by that I mean just like looking at the mini map, he sees this red dot coming in through the side, and he's like, okay, well I'm just gonna send units and kill it, just like he did. Free like 10 plus supply, and now. Ty, he's gonna like circle his army around. I really like what he's doing here. So like this army over here, it went from here to here, and this army over here went from here to here to here. So the next logical step for Ty in his mind is since he has a part of his army here and a part of his army already here, he's just gonna back this up a little bit and then he's gonna bring this army just over here. So he groups up his entire army. So he has one big army. Uh, there were some siege tanks over here that have been sieged up the entire game. But since Ty went over here and then over here, uh, he knows that there's not going to be any frontal assault here. Uh, and once again, he has just these like little, this little hit squad ready to defend this base if Bunny s drops over here and stims some marines forward. Or if he like drops over here or if he even drops over there. So Ty's uh, marine tank positioning is just on the next level than bunnies and his army movements as well he could almost make a movie about this <clears throat> about this is like as complicated as world war ii patterns <laughs> like uh... rommel and how he posi out, out position outplayed his opponents he was called the desert fox because he did more with less units his siege tanks and everything uh... so the next step after grouping up his entire army over here is to just kind of go up here and kind of elevate your units into Bunny's main, which is a really, really good positioning for Ty. Uh, Bunny, he's kind of like, he sees there's siege tanks over there that aren't guarded by Marines, but he's, this has kind of forced him to go into a base trade situation. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the only reason why he's moving his army out over here, because he's trying to go into a base trade scenario. Uh, this isn't really that great. Like, it's his best decision right now because he doesn't have a fourth base. The best way is to like, get straight on top of Ty's production and kind of like try to take some good engagements, and then Ty can't use his bank to replenish his units, but it's not going to work. Uh, so, as we see here, now that Bunny's like over here, he's going for a full base race. He's stimming head on. And we see Ty, he's kind of, he's in a good position already. So, the next step is going to be to like just kind of like take him out, take out his uh, mining base over here, and kind of contain Bunny to just two bases where he has no mineral patches left. 
And Bunny also lost like two barracks there and an engineering bay and armor. He's lost a lot of infrastructure already. So this base race by him is not working out too well. And we can see here, Ty, he already has some units well positioned. They were actually, in fact, rallied over there. Well, not over there exactly. But they were ra they were close enough so that all he has to do is lift up his base, siege up units, and Bunny can't even base race him. Because, once again, this just kind of like a local rally point over here to be able to defend all of those locations if anything happens is really, really paying off for Ty in this game. Like now Bunny's base race has stopped. Uh, Ty, he's gonna destroy Bunny's remaining economy. Bunny doesn't even kill the third command center. Uh, he has no army left either. Bunny's army is significantly bigger. He has a lot more siege tanks as well. And he's kinda just trapped now. Bunny's tr Bunny can't go down this ramp uh, if Ty sieges up fast enough. Uh, is he gonna siege up fast enough? No, he just backs up, but he, okay, so he backs up to sandwich this army. So this is Bunny's remaining army left, and Ty knows that he's up a base over here. He killed Bunny's fourth base. So all he has to do is wipe out this army, and then Bunny's going to have no minerals left. Like, he's not going to have any income left to replace his army, because it's the time of the game where mules have done their job. They have over, they have over mined the mineral bases or the mineral patches in the bases and now they're gonna just kinda die soon or not die he's gonna be out of minerals so he's not gonna be able to remake an army so as long as he can get rid of this army he's just he's basically gonna win because bunny's gonna have no money left and he's gonna so bunny's basically gonna be in checkmate here so Ty playing a very patient game he's actually gonna bring the majority of his army bunny he's like gonna hurriedly try to reinforce this army but Ty is just in a much easier spot, like he's a lot closer. So now uh, he's just going to sandwich this army and now that was a really good trade by Bunny. That's what would have happened over here if Ty didn't have this group of units at the watchtower to like kind of mess up the flank over here. So now Bunny's just, he has like so many siege tanks that it doesn't even matter if Bunny sieges up or if Ty like sieges up into Bunny's siege tank line, uh, Bunny can just bully his way into into this siege tank line that's what you can do with mul with a ton of siege tanks because you don't have enough to like completely destroy the siege tank count before uh, before you the other players with more siege tanks sieges up and then just kills all of the siege tanks so this game pretty much over uh, it was a pretty cool game I thought to analyze because we got to take a look at a Korean Terran players TVT and I guess we can just, it kind of just says to us that TVT is just a lot, a lot strong, or Terran versus Terran is a lot more advanced in Korea right now, as evidenced by Ty's play, and that we, there's a lot to learn from it, especially all of those advanced army movements. So that about wraps this video up. Hopefully, yeah, I haven't made a lot of TVTs lately, so hopefully this will do for the immediate time being. and will satisfy you guys. It's always a treat to uh, analyze these videos and kind of share the complexity of StarCraft. And... Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe, and adios everyone.